Alright, so here he is. This is a shot I was able to find in my archives. The young man who I believe was Joshua Savion. I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm the first person ever murdered by one of our own. And when I say one of our own, I'm not sure if I can certainly say Free Stater uh, to describe Mooney Savion. But if he's not a Free Stater, Mooney was a Free Stater in everything but name. The only question would be a technicality of whether he signed the letter of intent before he moved up here. I'm pretty sure this is Mooney standing right next to his son in this shot. These little demonstrations were in 2007. Now I tried to be kind of careful in the last video, maybe not completely careful, but careful about one thing and that is to make sure that we're not judging Mooney guilty, you know, before, uh, you know, until proven innocent, that kind of thing. We, we don't want to automatically assume that everything we're hearing is true. However, again, there is still no reason to doubt the official story in the sense that, or at least in the aspect that Mooney apparently really did shoot his son. But there, there is probably another caveat that we should attach to this. This came from one of my viewers watching the first video, and he was asking if Mooney was on any kind of medications. And I think maybe the more important question we should ask is whether Mooney was required to take any medications. If he was forced to take some medication that changed him in some way, that's just about the only thing I can think of that would maybe explain away some of what happened. Maybe. If he was taking drugs that were prescribed to him on purpose without being forced to, that would probably make him responsible for the um, for the effects of the drugs. You know, the government is right about one thing when it says that you're responsible for your actions whether you're committing them on drugs or not. If the government's forced you to be on regulation on the, on medications, then it becomes the responsible party to a large extent. But I I don't I don't know. We'll know more later. This is though an important question that doesn't get asked often enough. People want to talk all about the guns and very little about medication. And it should always be asked when there is a senseless murder is whether there could be some blame on the part of the pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical company that created the medication. But I don't even know if Mooney was on medications. I do know that we should not be sweeping this under the rug. This kind of an incident the appropriate way to react to it is to behave differently from the way the government behaves when its people commit murders. Gov governments tend to try and sweep things under the rug and try to uh, 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 circle the wagons or explain away what their people did or say it was okay, blame somebody else. We kind of have to try to not do that. Unless there's really somebody else to blame. Again, like if someone were forcing him to take medications. We can't and probably shouldn't be supportive of our own when they do this kind of thing. I suppose you can support the human rights of someone who has done something wrong. Uh, if Mooney had survived this for some reason, we could support him not being tortured or we could, we could oppose excessively cruel treatment of him, but we must be unlike the government in our reactions to this. I remember hearing a story of the early days of the Tiananmen, well, maybe it was in the middle to the later days of the Tiananmen Square protests in the late 80s, where re reporters were noticing that this, uh, you know, ostensibly, essentially pro-democracy or liberty-leaning movement was starting to exhibit autocratic behavior, even in this, you know, it, it didn't last very long, but it was already starting to, be, be, exhibit this hierarchical structure and information control and stuff like that. We haven't been like that, you know, in the 10 years of our existence as a movement, or 12 years, depending on how you count it. For the most part, we tend to be pretty transparent. I think there's a minority within the movement that likes the idea sometimes of, of, of quelling information that is of public interest, legitimate public interest, but Transparency is kind of the way to go with something like this. There's that uh, Tom Clancy movie. I'm amazed how many pro-liberty ideas I get from a neocon. But there's this Tom Clancy movie from the, I guess it was the early 90s, Clear and Present Danger. And in, in it, uh, the Harrison Ford character 
he's at a meeting with the president, and uh, it's discovered that the president was buddies with a drug dealer, right? It's discovered that his buddy is a big-time drug dealer. So everybody's talking about how they're going to play it down, and Harrison Ford just stands there looking kind of uncomfortable. And somebody says, Mr. Ford, or well, <laughs> actually Mr. Uh, Ryan, Jack, Jack Ryan, Mr. Ryan, what's wrong? You, you don't like our idea? And he says, well, no, you, the way you react to something like this, if someone says that, if someone accuses you of being friends with a drug dealer, the media accuses you of that, you say, no, I was best friends with that drug dealer. And if they accuse you of being best friends with that drug dealer, then you say, well, uh, no, I was uh, lifelong best friends with that drug dealer. You give them nowhere to go. And that's not the only reason you do it. You're not trying to, you know, fight the media or play a game with them. You do it because it's just it's just more appropriate to avoid downplaying things. We're going to be stuck with this no matter what we do. Some folks will condemn me for outing him as a, a free stater or a free stater associate. But it is our job to criticize and ostracize our own when they do things like this. Even if it's just their memory that we're ostracizing. We're supposed to condemn violations of the zero aggression principle. Mooney just did more to justify police state behavior than any New Hampshire liberty activist I can think of since Carl Draga. If you want to even call Draga a liberty activist. And at least Draga wasn't completely targeting people who were completely innocent. Anyway, maybe I'm losing it just a little bit here. But we are supposed to lose it a little bit when someone murders a kid.